Are you someone that's always freezing cold or your hands and feet are just never able to warm up? Well, in this video, I'm going to look at how we can specifically fix this and even explore some of the potential causes behind such cold or low body temperature. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please like this video, smash subscribe below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below as I do my best to respond to each and every single one. So ultimately today I'm going to look at why some people get freezing cold or just have a poor ability to warm up their core body temperature. So before we get stuck into this, we need to have a look at the specific um, core body temperature reference ranges that are considered to be either extremely abnormal or normal. So we can see here um, that in Fahrenheit, the most ideal body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and anything well and truly beyond this or anything well and truly below this value is considered a medical emergency. In addition, we can see in the Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion, you can actually see that different age groups, so between um, zero to two years versus three to 10 years versus 11 to 65 years versus 65 years and above, we can see a general decline in body temperature as we age. So let's look at the oral uh, 11 to 65 years category, probably most of my audience listening in between that age group. Ideally, we want it to be 36.4 to 37.6 degrees Celsius. And ideally, we actually want it to be on the higher end of that range as that will indicate good, strong, healthy metabolism provided someone's in a, in a state of good health. So let's take a look now at some specific causes of low body temperature first and foremost and i hope that those that are listening in have heard of the thyroid gland but first of all let's look at the thyroid gland itself and specifically a case or a condition known as hypothyroidism which is low thyroid output Bear in mind, the thyroid gland is so important, not only for regulating body temperature, but bear in mind, there are literally thousands of specific receptors around the body that rely on thyroid hormone to initiate processes. So many people don't know that the thyroid can also govern digestive enzyme secretion, sex hormone production, the rate of nail growth, the rate of hair growth, um, it can affect someone's ability to drop body fat. There are so many potential benefits and reasons to care about your thyroid hormone output. So those that have low thyroid hormone output are likely to suffer from low core body temperature. And this is very well documented that thyroid hormone output, specifically T4 and T3, not so much TSH, T4 and T3, both active forms of thyroid hormone, T3 being stronger than T4, is responsible for improving or maintaining core body temperature. So there are many factors that can influence thyroid hormone output. I'll dedicate a separate video covering how to optimize thyroid function. Next up, we have low cortisol. Not many people know this, that low cortisol can actually impair body temperature and make one always feel cold. Now, the reason being is due to the fact that cortisol alongside aldosterone can regulate minerals in the body. So cortisol can act as a mineral corticoid, so it can regulate water retention and fluid balance in the body. And obviously the ability to hold fluids is very important for maintaining proper circulation and blood flow around the body. So that's one potential mechanism by, behind which low cortisol can affect body temperature. Next, we have hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. Low blood sugar, I'm sure many of you have experienced in the past, can lead to adrenaline increase and can shut down thyroid function if we're chronically in a state of low blood sugar. It can directly affect thyroid hormone output. So keep in mind, low blood sugar can drop body temperature as well. 
Next up, we have iron deficiency. Hopefully all of you listening in have had your iron levels checked. Iron is incredibly important for energy levels and even thyroid hormone output. And being low in iron can affect circulation. And so a classic example of iron deficiency is low body temperature. So be sure to check your iron levels. Next up, we have low protein intake. Bear in mind, protein is the most thermogenic food, which means it actually heats up core body temperature. So make sure that if you're suffering from low body temperature to ensure that your protein intake is optimal or ideal. In my opinion, I like to, well, my stance here is 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. That's just my opinion. I mean, I'm basing that off Dr. Braden Schofield. He's done some great research there. We also have infections. Certain types of infection can cause low body temperature and also increase body temperature. Then we have ethanol or drug ingestion. We have malnutrition. We have gastrointestinal bleeding and even some other endocrine deficiencies such as pan hypopituitarism and Addison's disease or uremia. So a range of causes for low body temperature to consider. So here's a little strategy or a novel solution to counteract low body temperature that you've probably never heard of before and that is aronia berries otherwise known as choke berries now aronia berries beyond just their amazing antioxidant profile these berries have been shown to increase the concentration of the pep hormone nor adrenaline in healthy subjects as blood so in healthy humans blood and the researchers suspect that this rise in noradrenaline helps cells to generate heat and also increases a process of thermogenesis. So we can see here the study was titled Anthocyanin Rich Aronia Melanocarpa Extract Improves Body Temperature Maintenance in Healthy Women with a Cold Constitution. So although they did use chokeberry extract, many of the constituents found within just the berry, the whole berry itself, will likely lead to a rise in core body temperature and help one with cold intolerance. So really you can just find aronia berries at a health food store. You can just have like a handful or throw it in a smoothie, pretty versatile. I think berries are one of those food groups that can be used on a wide variety of population groups without any severe consequences to their metabolic functioning or general longevity in fact. Berry consumption has been shown to aid and support all parameters of longevity, despite their you know, relatively moderate carbohydrate content. So I wouldn't even be worried about that at all. So here's another bonus benefit of aronia berries, AKA choke berries. The study was titled, Effects of Aronia Berry Polyphenols on Vascular Function and Gut Microbiota, a Double-Blind Randomized Controlled Trial in Adult Men. And the results of the study suggested that a consumption of aronia whole fruit and extract powder for 12 weeks led to a significant increase in flow mediated dilation, which is blood flow or circulation um, related to nitric oxide. And they can see that although no changes were found in gut microbiota diversity, consumption of aronia extract increased the growth of anaerostypes, a type of bacteria, whereas aronia whole fruit extracts show significant increases in bacteria these. So these are really challenging names to pronounce. I probably completely butchered that. Um, bacteria D's, bacteria D's. If anyone knows how to pronounce that, drop a comment below. Honestly, I find that really difficult. And you can see here in the conclusion in healthy men, consumption of aronia berry polyphenols improved endothelial function and modulated gut microbiota composition, indicating that a regular consumption of aronia berries has the potential to maintain cardiovascular health in individuals at low risk of cardiovascular disease. So aronia berry is definitely a useful tool yet again to support us with our metabolic goals. And also guys, bear in mind that caffeine can also raise core body temperature. Um, you can see the study was titled, Effects of Caffeine on Skin and Core Temperatures, Alertness and Recovery, Sleep During Circadian Misalignment, and caffeine was shown to raise core body temperature there. So hopefully you learned something new in today's video. 
If you did, please like this video. Please check out all of the other amazing links in the video description below. And be sure to check out my website where I have more amazing health content. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.